I'd always vaguely expected to outgrow my limitations. One day, I'd stop twisting my hair and wearing running shoes all the time and eating exactly the same food every day. I'd remember my friend's birthdays. I'd learn Photoshop. I wouldn't let my daughter watch TV during breakfast. I'd read Shakespeare. I'd spend more time laughing and having fun. I'd be more polite. I'd visit museums more often. I wouldn't be scared to drive. One April day, on a morning just like every other morning, I had a sudden realization. I was in danger of wasting my life. As I stared out the rain-spattered window of a city bus, I saw that the years were slipping by. What do I want from life anyway? I asked myself. Well, I want to be happy. But I had never thought about what made me happy or how I might be happier. I had much to be happy about. I was married to Jamie, the tall, dark, and handsome love of my life. We had two delightful young daughters, seven-year-old Eliza and one-year-old Eleanor. I was a writer after having started out as a lawyer. I was living in my favorite city, New York. I had close relationships with my parents, sister, and in-laws. I had friends. I had my health. I didn't have to color my hair. But too often, I sniped at my husband or the cable guy. I felt dejected after even a minor professional setback. I drifted out of touch with old friends. I lost my temper easily. I suffered bouts of melancholy, insecurity, listlessness, and free-floating guilt. As I looked out the blurry bus window, I saw two figures cross the street. A woman about my age trying simultaneously to balance an umbrella, look at her cell phone, and push a stroller carrying a yellow slickered child. The sight gave me a jolt of recognition. That's me, I thought. There I am. I have a stroller, a cell phone, an alarm clock, an apartment, a neighborhood. Right now, I'm riding the same crosstown bus that I take across the park, back and forth. This is my life, but I never give any thought to it. I wasn't depressed, and I wasn't having a midlife crisis, but I was suffering from midlife malaise a recurrent sense of discontent and almost a feeling of disbelief. Can this be me, I'd wonder, as I picked up the morning newspapers or sat down to read my email? Can this be me? My friends and I joked about the beautiful house feeling when, as in the David Byrne song, Once in a Lifetime, we'd periodically experience the shock of thinking, this is not my beautiful house. Is this really it, I found myself wondering and answering, yep, this is it. But though at times I felt dissatisfied that something was missing, I also never forgot how fortunate I was. When I woke up in the middle of the night, as I often did, I'd walk from one room to another to gaze at my sleeping husband tangled in the sheets and my daughters surrounded by their stuffed animals, all safe. I had everything I could possibly want, yet I was failing to appreciate it bogged down in petty complaints and passing crises, weary of struggling with my own nature, I too often failed to comprehend the splendor of what I had. I didn't want to keep taking these days for granted. The words of the writer Colette had haunted me for years. What a wonderful life I've had. I only wish I'd realized it sooner. I didn't want to look back at the end of my life or after some great catastrophe and think, how happy I used to be then, if only I'd realized it. I needed to think about this. How could I discipline myself to feel grateful for my ordinary day? How could I set a higher standard for myself as a wife, a mother, a writer, a friend? How could I let go of everyday annoyances to keep a larger, more transcendent perspective? I could barely remember to stop at the drugstore to buy toothpaste. It didn't seem realistic to think that I could incorporate these high aims into my everyday routine. The bus was hardly moving, but I could hardly keep pace with my own thoughts. I've got to tackle this, I told myself. As soon as I have some free time, I should start a happiness project. But I never had any free time. When life was taking its ordinary course, it was hard to remember what really mattered. If I wanted a happiness project, then I'd have to make the time. I had a brief vision of myself living for a month on a picturesque, windswept island where each day I would gather seashells, read Aristotle, and write in an elegant parchment journal. Nope, I admitted, that's not going to happen. I needed to find a way to do it here and now. I needed to change the lens through which I viewed everything familiar.